Hey everyone, it's Siphon from Siphon T C G. Come watch another video, and I know I've been away for a while. It's been pretty hectic lately. I've been traveling to League Cups and League Challenges, and I've had changes in my work schedule. I've had a lot of stuff outside of, you know, my usual schedule to do, but I'm back. Here to talk about a new game uh, that just came out, the Chrono Clash. Uh, card game, or it, it has like 13 different names. I'm just gonna start, oh god dang it, I'm effing up already. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling it uh, Chrono Clash. I know it's been called Naruto Baruto when we didn't know that other sets would be coming out. Um, but now we know that Godzilla will be its own card game slash expansion. The way they say it's weird. Like, I don't know why they don't want to just call it an expansion, because it, it's an expansion. They're calling it its own game. I, I don't freaking know. But this, like I said, again, the base game with Naruto and Boruto just came out. I haven't been enjoying it very much. And I believe a few days ago, Godzilla got announced. And we're going to kind of go over the cards. Um, the set will drop in September was announced. But uh, let's go ahead and start looking at some of the cards. Uh, we obviously know how this stuff. Let's just look at some of them. Let's just look at the revealing. So... First thing that they're revealing is Godzilla from 1984. Uh, let's see, it's going to be a six cost with six power, which is pretty decent um, mid game, um, depending on what your opponent does. This is a decent card if you're going second, because depending on how large of a creature your opponent plays, this allows you to play at least two creatures on your turn. But this gets plus one when it attacks a guardian. Um, and it gets, uh, is this, um, we have the rule book over here just in case. Uh, this is not on the rule book. This is not on the rule book. Am I missing something? Okay, this is a new one. Yeah, because I don't think anything in the current set has this. Okay, so this is this battle has toughness, which is I believe what this is. Um, you can choose to activate toughness when you summon a battler by putting a card face up underneath the battler with toughness. Your opponent must have an elusive battler to attack this battler whenever it would be destroyed. You discard the card under it instead. If there are no cards remaining under this battler, it would be destroyed. So this is so, so toughness. It, it seems okay. Um, I'm under the firm belief that um, you want board control over just raw attacking power. Now, most of the time when I played, especially when I first like played, like the first, especially the first stage, I just constantly attacked guardian stack. I attacked guardian stack. I attacked another guardian stack. Just constantly kept going. But then I noticed if maybe I swing once at the guardian stack and I use the rest of my battles to clear his board um, because there is summoning sickness. His, my opponent's just at a disadvantage if they do not get enough damage onto me. And this allowing you to keep your battler safe. Now, this this depends. Um, there are some cards that won't allow you to attack the Garden Stack, stuff that has Sentinel, which is right here. When this battler is tapped, your Garden Stack cannot be attacked. You may tap this battler whenever you summon it. Um, when there's stuff like that, people will have to go for, um, your battlers. Uh, and toughness can be useful there, just to keep it on the field. But unfortunately enough, this does not have that luxury. Uh, but we'll get into toughness a little bit more, uh, once I get through all the cards that are being revealed right now. So this is going to have plus one, plus toughness, which isn't too bad. And when you summon it, draw a card. Like I said, I think the, the big thing that you're looking at is the destroy power. That has six is a really good number um, right now. Um, I, th I think they not the most impressive card. I wish there were more effects here. Uh, maybe like, you know, add one to your guardian stack or draw an EX card. Just drawing plus one is not, um, it's not really doing it for me. We have Rodon next from 2004, which has toughness. And it has elusive, which we looked at down here. 
which allows you to attack somebody when they have toughness. Um, as you see, your opponent must have an elusive battler to attack this battler. Um, so if a lot of cards in the meta have toughness, uh, Rodon would be able to start swinging at that to get it off the board. But yet again, just like this, not too much to really look at, and neither one of these two have guardian abilities. So you're literally just looking at it for the power, and for it to be a 7 cost, I'm not that much of a fan. Not much of a fan at all. First two cards very disappointing so far. We have Crystal Zone, a, an effect card. Um, let's just make sure we have this right. So I believe you choose one of your battlers and tap it. Let me just make sure. Choose one of your other battlers, and I believe it is... Now, which way is the arrow facing? Okay, so you're going to untap um, one of your battlers, which allows you to do some funky things, uh, like retapping it um, with other cards, allowing effects to play again. Um, uh, the Guardian ability, which is, I believe, you will tap one of the targets. Not the best ability. Um, obviously, I know that they're probably holding off on some of the good stuff. As a two cost, um, I'm also not really excited about something like this. Um, as more and more sets come out, and maybe um, as the meta gets more and more developed, we can see stuff like this. Um, tapping abilities be a little bit more useful, I do believe. Uh, coming into play effects, e ETBs, and when stuff gets destroyed, it's just more effective. <gasps> kind of like Burning Godzilla, which I am ex super excited about. So, Burning Godzilla. F let's start with the bottom part. 9 strength for a 7 cost. This is the type of battler, if I go first, I do not mind playing. I do not mind playing this first turn. Now, obviously you'll... Get in the main reason why you won't, but just looking at raw stats, I am just totally down. And it's effects. When it's a summon, you choose an, another um, opponent, and you destroy one of their battlers that are uh, four or less. Pretty good. I'm already a fan of this card. It has fast, which means it can attack the turn it will summon. Now this little uh, bite mark, um, one of my friends that was checking this out did tell me a little bit about this. I didn't get to, I didn't get to visually see it, but let me see, because I'm pretty sure it. I I seen it when I was like showing a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, so Burn Godzilla can also be some by paying five on the Chrono Gauge, which is that little thing right there. If you summon it this way, he will immediately attack, even if their Chrono Gauge. Is now on your opponent's side. He will be destroyed after the sneak attack summon. So, what that pretty much means, if it has the little bite marks, is you can always attack even if it goes on the other side um, for your opponent's gauge. But there can be instances where you swing um, with your board, get down to zero stacks remaining on your opponent's side. You summon this swing for game. You can do cute stuff like that. And you also get plus one when attacking a guardian. Is that plus one or plus seven, actually? Hold on. Wait a minute. That that can't be plus seven, right? Wait, is that plus... Is that plus seven? Okay, that's plus one. Okay. I, I got scared a little bit, guys. I got scared a little bit. Um, But this is already exciting me a lot. Um, but obviously... I'm personally a fan of red. Red is my favorite color right now. Um, I'm thinking, depending on how well the sets are, I might just build mono red. Right now, I've been mixing the colors, um, like most people have. But yeah, definitely a fan of this card. So we have our second deck, which appears to be blue, blue purple. Uh, we have Livestream Mantra, which has for a four cost, three power. Not too bad early game, depending on if you go second. Um, has fast, so you can attack it. You can attack the turn you summon it. Elusive, which means it can attack things that have toughness. And I believe that is withdrawal. Yeah. So um, whenever this loses a battle, 
it goes back to your hand. So again, there's really cute. There's some cute stuff you can do here. Um, I believe you can swing at a guardian stack, lose, put it back in your hand. As long as you still have chrono gauge, summon it again. Because that's fast, you can swing again. I'm thinking that's how you can, you can do something like this. And if you can, this is really defining. I think this can this single card can define the meta. Because if you can swing multiple turn times in a turn, excuse me, with this card, just to get Guardian Sex off the field, I don't see a problem with that. In fact, I think that's amazing. Because the rules state, Guardians always get discarded. Always. Unless unless I read it wrong. Let me let me just make sure, because that's how I've always played it. Um... Um, attacking the Guardian stack. Yeah, Guardians are always destroyed after the attack. So there's... I genuinely think, if I'm looking at this right, I can summon it, swing, it can die, it comes back to my hand. Summon it, swing, it could die, come back to my hand. I could do this possibly three times in a turn. We're looking at possibly two Guardian Swings per turn with this. That sounds phenomenal. And then it has a Guardian ability. When it gets destroyed, send a card back, to, uh, send one of your opponent's battles back to its hand. Uh, let me just clarify. Yeah, return the target to its owner hand. Oh, and if it also had a quest, it also uh, returns to that card as well. I'm a huge fan. I can see decks built around this. Like, decks to get this out faster. Um, I believe blue has a few cards that can lower the... Uh, cause to have some leader abilities. Uh, I believe they're called. That can get this out cheaper. Because, like, four is relatively cheap. But imagine if you can get this out for two. You know what I mean? Imagine if you can get this out for two. The amount of just crazy, nuts, good things you can do with this. I'm on board. King Kydra from 1999. It has a... You can summon it for seven. Um, to allow to sneak attack and plus one, bring it up to seven. And when this is tapped, so we, you know, we see things that are tapped. My favorite color combination is red-purple right now. So, uh, uh. when this gets tapped, you choose a battler. Um, I believe that is... Let me just... Um, yeah, I, w I was making sure, I'm pretty sure it was card cost, but I didn't want to be incorrect when I said that. Um, so basically you just knock out anything that's six or less. You just kill it. You're like, bye. You see this? Off the field. 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 That's just for tapping it. And imagine if you have things that can untap it and then retap it in a, in a single turn. Yeah. Um, now what are these extra cards or are these regular cards? I didn't actually look at that. I want to say these are regular. But, even if this is an extra card, that's not too bad either. But I'm wanting to say this is a regular battle card. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. Um, not just theme... Um, just an extra card. Choose one of your battlers. It gains plus one when it attacks a guardian. Okay. Can't complain. Ability. Pretty good to send back something back to its owner's hand. It's a two it's a two drop. I'm really not gonna be too picky about it. I like the guardian ability a lot. The uh um the Extra damage um, of hitting a leader. I mean, hitting a guardian, I should say. Could swing games. You know, because like I said, keeping battlers on the field is very important. Um, especially if people are not clearing your board. Just be able to swing freely without even having to drop stuff. Or just having stuff to sacrifice to bring out the X card. 
the extra little damage could come into play. So, okay. We have Mantra from 1992. God, this stuff makes me want to watch Godzilla movies. I think I, I, I'm going to go watch Godzilla movies after this. So, to start off, when this gets destroyed, draw the next card. Okay. Um, as a six drop, I would rather this be a summoning effect. Or at least have some more stuff on the bottom, but we'll see what else it has. Um, has fast, so it can attack the turn that comes in. Plus one on the uh, swing at the Guardian stack. And has elusive, so it can hit things with toughness. Um, personally, I would prefer this to be a five drop. Um, because when it comes to six drop, you're wanting, you're maybe wanting a little bit more power. Or just some more effects. Um, but purple does have some nice tools. Um, that we, it can play around with, so. I'll hold off on outright calling this a bad card, because I definitely don't think, think it's bad. I just definitely think the call should be a little bit lower. Because it's not really giving you much. Now. If this 6 strength turns out to be perfectly fine in the current meta, then I suppose it's okay. I'll I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that when it gets destroyed, it draws the X card. I, I'll keep everything else. I could keep everything else. But if this was summoned, or when this was tapped, we drew an X card. Sweet. Destroyed, mm, not a fan of stuff that gets destroyed unless it's low cost. Okay, we'll hold off on it. Mecha Godzilla from 1993. Very good, very good. Double toughness. So does that mean you can add two cards? I think that's what it means. You can put two cards on it, which is... Maybe toughness can, you know, really change things. Again, I'm trying to look at... Whoa. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, I, I'm just thinking this means you can add two. Not largely a fan. Again, it's a six drop. Maybe this is... Maybe this would be better. So when this attacks, uh, a chosen battler gets minus two, which is, I believe... I'm going to say time or strength. Strength, sorry. So, you can choose something to get uh, minus two strength. Uh, not really doing it for me, honestly. I just wish I had more effects, or if this was at least a coming into play effect. Nah, not doing it for me. Alright, we got Gudra. Um, I can't really tell what that's summon for because the sample is kind of covering it. But we'll have Sneak Attack. We'll have Elusive. And we'll also have Legion. Uh, whenever this battler is destroyed, discard the top card of your deck. If a battler is discarded in this way, draw it. If a battler has more than one of these icons, do this once for each Legion icon it has. So basically, this is a bit of recovery. Um, it somewhat prevents you from, you know, dead drawing. Um, so if you have, like, nothing but, like, EX cards you can't use or just spells that you can't really use, if the, you can sack this off to try to get a card and then play it. Um, there's some really cute things you can do with Legion. Um, it's ability, when it summons, choose a battler, give it minus three strength. Pretty good. Um, now, I do not know because I've never been the situation if a battler has three attack and you give him minus three because in super if you were to do that to something it would die does does that happen in in this game don't really know because again like never had that never had that come across ever um well let's, we won't assume it kills it for right now but I still think minus three is pretty good. Um, uh, guardian ability, basically the same thing. So, you know, when you flip it over, choose something, give it minus three. Um, we have armed attack. Choose one of choose one of your battlers. What is the? Oh, is this new as well? Ooh, oh no, 
Uh, no, that's not what that is. Yeah, there's something new. I've never seen this icon. Yeah, I've, I've never seen this icon. Uh, so we have a new icon, it appears. Unless I'm just... Missing something. I don't believe anything in the base set... Either base set had that. Hmm. Interesting. Um... Oh, okay, I think I know what this is. Okay, okay. Let me, hold on. Sorry, squeaky chair, squeaky chair, guys. So here's what I think this does. Choose one of the cards in your hand and again sneak attack for, it appears to be one or eight. That's what I think it is. Choose one of the cards in your hand and gain sneak attack. And I think, again, I think that's one. That, again, just like I told you guys with the Burning Godzilla, that can do, you can do some really cute things with that now. Unfortunately, it is a six drop. Not, ah, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess it has to be that big because if it was smaller, it'd probably be too broken. I mean, it's probably broken now because that's just, I mean, being able to summon something, Hold on. Is that, is that, is that a one? The more I look, I think that's a one. Let me, so from certain angles, it looks like a zero as well, but that, that definitely can't be a zero. Okay, that's definitely a one, so. So make, so give something in your hand a stink attack for one. Uh, as long as your gauge doesn't go over uh, the uh, time zone with this, you can definitely just play whatever you want for one, and just like swing for game or swing for a big uh, guardian stack. There. Oh uh, god, that sounds so freaking good. Oh wow. Uh, it's guardian abilities. Yeah, just send something back to their owner's hand. Pretty good card actually. The more and more I think about it, pretty good card. I like this. Curry Type 3. A 9 cost, 9 strength. It has fast, plus 2 when it swings out a guardian, plus toughness. But wait, there's more. Choose one of your battlers with toughness and it gains plus 1. So basically, Curry. Uh, son, I keep calling it Curry. Korea U type could give Mecha Godzilla plus one. That's pretty nice. Because now Mecha Godzilla has plus two, now swinging for eight. Which, you know, let's say it was going against. Uh, does something on here have seven? Let's just say this. Well, now it kills it because, you know, it's above now. Uh, that's pretty decent, and no Guardian building, which is kind of unfortunate, because as a 9 drop, but I definitely, th this could be something you bring out late game, as, as just a big hitter. Um, you definitely have to, because it's 9, you still have to take your time with putting it out, and you have to really put a lot of thought into it. Because again, you're most likely switching the gauge over to the enemy side by playing this card. There's very few times that you play this card and it doesn't become your opponent's turn. Interested. Wait, hold on. You could armored attack, sneak attack this for one. Oh, what? hold on. Oh my gosh, hold on. Wait, deck three seems broken. Wait a minute. Someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. I could armor and attack this turn. Choose this. Making a sneak attack for one. Move the gauge one over to play this. After this is already played down. Maybe like a previous turn, maybe this turn. Okay, it would have to be last turn most likely because that this would be 12. So last, let's say I played this down last turn. I armor and attack this turn. Put this down. 
I give this plus one. I swing with this. And I swing with this. That seems really good, actually. Um, I think that's common. I think you have to be able to get sneak attack on this. Because, again, nine is pretty, pretty hefty. I'm super interested in this now. Now that I just looked at the uh, armored attack again. This core could actually literally define decks by itself. I mean, it forces you to play green, but I don't think green's like the worst color to play. Green's probably my, it's probably second or third best color. Possibly the best, now that I'm looking at it. Wow, the armored attack could actually define the meta. Huh. Alright, down to the last four. We have Godzilla from 1964. It gets plus one and minus one strength. Or is that time? Is that time or strength? Okay, no, that's cost. Or okay, so yeah, yellow's always. Wait, is that leader? Oh, because that's the little things around it, don't it? Okay, so it's leader. Never mind. Oh, wait, that means you could... Oh, my gosh. That's so sick. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is actually getting me so excited. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna stop trying to be a little schoolgirl. <laughs> so when this attacks, this gets plus three, making it seven. And like I said, you get plus one, swing out a guardian, and next thing you summon has minus one to its cost. Pretty good. Leader ability, draw a card. Standard for a five drop. Um some good effects, but doesn't really give you the souse like it could. Doesn't really give you that souse. Godzilla the fourth form, um, when it gets destroyed, you choose an, an enemy battler with uh, three or less and destroy it. Okay. Yeah. Um, as a seven drop, I wish it was a little bit better. Like, maybe if that was like a five instead of a three. Uh, we'll, we'll see. What, what else does it have? It gets plus one. Oh, a sentinel. Oh, ho, 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 sentinel. Oh, yes. So this is not only hard to kill. If they ever do kill it, that you can destroy seven on their field. But it's even if they kill it, they have to swing at this or they'll never touch your guardian stack. Oh, wow. That's actually really good. And you can bring this in tapped, I believe. But sentinel, can, you, can, uh, tap, you can bring it in tapped, correct? While this battle is tapped, your guard stack cannot be attacked. You may tap this battle when you summon it. So, literally, you could pr bring this out turn one and just lock your opponent. And then you could just start playing a bunch of crazy stuff. That's really good. No guardian ability for a 7 drop sucks, but I think the Sentinel... So I'm sold in this card just by the Sentinel itself. Really nice. Uh, Godzilla's Invasion. Choose one of your things and untap it. Plus three... Which is time. You get plus three time. Uh, so time cards are very stupid. And they should be taken out of the game. And I hate it. And I'm very salty. <laughs> so one of my friends that um, just bought cards. I played him. I played him twice. Both games in a row. He had, three, he had at least three time modifiers in his guardian stacks. Which just like. Like legitly flipped the game so hard. And this is a one drop. So, like, this isn't even that costly. Like, it's only the most minimal cost. Unless they come up with stuff that's, um, zero cost in the future. Um, but just to play one card, you get plus three. So, I guess plus two, kind of. Um, I mean, you can, you can literally read that as plus two, which is actually, it's a guardian ability, is getting plus two. Which, on certain turns, can definitely screw over your opponent. Uh, I'm a fan of this card, yes. Jet Jaguar. Three calls. Pretty nice. Two strength. Okay. Gets plus three when it swings. Okay. Has fast, which means it can attack the first turn. So you can easily start swinging for five as a, with a three cost. Pretty good. Elusive, which means it can, it can attack things with toughness. 
and withdrawal, which, as we've seen earlier, as we've seen earlier, that's going to be really good. And like this, unlike that, this stays at three. This goes to five. Like, I am just, both of those cards are so impressive to me. I also believe this means this is going to be the uh, SR. Oh, is this going to mean? Yeah, I think this means it's going to be the SR. Yeah, because this is definitely going to be the SR. So, yeah, these are probably the SR. Yeah, I kind of want an SR this card. This is really good. I think all of these cards. So, I'd probably say, if I could say my best card from each deck would be definitely Burning Godzilla from deck one. Deck number two, Lightspeed Mantra. Deck three... Like, because of this card, these cards become so much better. So, it definitely has to be armed attack. And, hmm, deck four. I think this one's... Wow, well, deck four is actually kind of hard. I'll probably say Jetguire, because I think Blue needs a little bit of help. Um, but both these cards, but especially this card. I think this could uh, really make Blue a little bit more viable in my eyes. Yeah, so is there anything else that we can look at? Okay, no. So, uh, that's going to be it for the Godzilla expansion. Uh, as more cards get revealed, we can take a look at them. But, it's been your boy, Siphon from Siphon TCG. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.